Hello, today we have Jeff Dow, the CEO, President, and Director of 60 Degrees Pharma. Jeff, great to have you back. Craig, it's great to see you again. Jeff, your company has a very clear mission, tackling infectious diseases with unmet medical needs. Let's start with a high-level overview for those hearing about 60 Degrees Pharma for the first time. Yeah, Craig, so uh, our focus is on new products for infectious disease. We focus on small molecules, so not on antibodies or vaccines. Uh, we have a single approved product uh, called Aracoda that's commercially available in the US. That's for malaria prevention. And we're currently focused on uh, developing the commercialization strategy for that product for the intended use. And then we have a very focused uh, research and development program to expand the use of that product to treat a disease called babesiosis, which is transmitted by the same ticks that cause Lyme disease. Now, just to repeat, you said Aracoda approved for malaria prevention. Now, what I wanna know is how big is the market opportunity that you're addressing with Aracoda? And of course, what makes it unique compared to the other available products? So with respect to malaria prevention, its uh, main feature and benefit is that it's a weekly product, whereas all the other products are daily products, and there aren't any drug resistance issues. So you can imagine if you're a traveler or you're prescribing a medication for a traveler going to a, a place where malaria is common, uh, having the convenience of weekly dosing and not having to worry about drug resistance issues are pretty important drivers. As we move forward into the tick-borne disease therapeutic area, uh, we see the potential to treat maybe just over a million patients with babesiosis over the 10 years remaining on our market exclusivity for malaria. And that might be up to a, a billion dollar opportunity. Again, that disease is called babesiosis, Jeff. And of course, as you probably know, many viewers may not have yet heard of babesiosis. Could you go a little bit more deep into babesiosis and why, again, why is it such a big opportunity? So uh, babesiosis is a little bit like malaria, except that it's transmitted by the same ticks that cause Lyme disease, not mosquitoes. It invades your red blood cells, they burst, causing fever, anemia, and the other acute symptoms. And then like malaria, babesiosis can also be a long-lived infection. And uh, symptoms can recur in a chronic form in many people months or years after the initial infection. It's those chronic presentations of the disease where we think there's a real unmet medical need and a commercial opportunity. Now, Jeff, you're currently running three different trials for babesiosis. What are you hoping to prove in each one, and when might we see data? So we've got three trials. They're each focused on a particularly nasty manifestation of babesiosis, so severe disease in hospitalized patients, recurring disease in immunosuppressed patients who have drug-resistant parasites, and then uh, in chronic patients who are trying to recover from uh, what we call post-infectious syndromes or, in, or symptoms of chronic disease. And the babesiosis is uh, prolonging that recovery time. And so we want to see what our products uh, can do for, for that group of people. You also hold patents and options for Kelgosevere, chestnut tree extracts, and even veterinary indications. How do these fit into your broader strategy, Jeff? Are they real near-term opportunities or longer-term bets? So, of course, um, we're hopeful that our babesiosis program will produce the first data in 2026 and allow us to submit a supplemental NDA to FDA and get expanded labeling um, so we can go after that, that disease. Uh, and then the question is, what happens then in terms of our portfolio development? And so we have a number of um, areas of interest. One of them is in veterinary medicine. 
And that relates to expanding the use of Aracoda to other tick-borne diseases, which affect companion animals like dogs and horses. And then as it relates to our other pipeline program with Salgosevia, we're, we're taking a step back from that and determining whether we can commercialize a, a botanical extract from the original botanical source material with a, a more cost-effective and time-effective uh, development strategy. We'll be making that, those assessments and decisions over the next 12 months. Jeff, you have guided toward profitability by the fourth quarter of 2026. What are the key levers that will help you hit that goal? So what we're hoping to do is prove out um, in a pilot form the commercial case for uh, Aracoda for malaria prevention. So we have partnered with IQVIA, uh, which is a big commercial sales organization. We've hired a, a couple of inside sales reps uh, to reach out to uh, prescribers who prescribe anti-malarials. And we'll also have a, um, a, a copay card and uh, just more general outreach. Uh, and our goal over the next six months is to see at a small scale, which of those three things drive sales and increases prescriptions in amongst prescribers who are using at the moment competitor products. And then early next year, we'll make a decision on how to scale that up to reach profitability by the end of 2026. Final question, Jeff, what's the essential value proposition? Why should investors take an interest in 60 Degrees Pharma today? So, Craig, thanks for asking that. We're, we're, we believe we might be the smallest NASDAQ-listed biotech company with a commercial product, and that reflects both our uh, experience. It's not our first rodeo, and so we're confident with our Babesia program that we'll be successful with another FDA approval. Uh, and it also reflects perhaps the undervaluing or value proposition of the company where there is that opportunity for growth as we expand sales of an existing commercial product into new therapeutic areas. Jeff, thank you for sharing with us the story of 60 Degrees Pharma. Oh, it's my pleasure, Craig, and I'm looking forward to talking to you again in the future.